G'day and welcome to the world famous Barossa Valley, 70 kilometres roughly north of the South Australian capital. What a stunning day it is for a bit of a grape graze. Now, if you're planning a visit to Adelaide, we have 10 amazing things for you to do in this video, including a day trip here to the Barossa. More on that a little later. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's get into it. Adelaide is an amazing travel destination. The City of Churches has shrugged off its saintly image of old and offers an incredible arts and cultural scene, popping street art, a rich history to explore and fabulous food and wine. In this video, we'll pound the pavement on a guided walking tour. Get arty on North Terrace. Conquer the heady heights of Adelaide Oval. Head for the hills to Handorf. And much more. But before we put the pedal to the metal, take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing travel ideas. Thanks to our good friends at TFE Hotels, we're staying at the upscale Adina Apartment Hotel Adelaide Treasury, which occupies the former historic State Treasury buildings on Victoria Square. The central courtyard has a wonderfully European feel and offers a tranquil retreat from the hustle and bustle of the surrounding city. The apartment-style rooms are packed with period detail, alongside all the mod cons the modern traveller expects. Take some time during your stay to see some of the hotel's historical features, including the old cabinet room. Here, history was made numerous times. In 1894, women in South Australia were granted the right to vote and run for parliament. It was a combined world first. A walking tour is a great way to orientate yourself on a first visit to Adelaide, and I know just the lady to speak to on that score. My name is Katina, I am the owner and director of Flamboyance Tours and we operate walking tours across Adelaide City Centre. Adelaide is a really walkable city, I think it would be one of the most walkable cities in Australia if not anywhere and to be able to see everything in such close proximity is super easy, super convenient and it's just really fun, you see a lot of things on walking tours that you wouldn't be able to see by going on a coach or doing it another way. The Welcome to Adelaide Tour is what I call the quintessential tour of Adelaide. It shows all of the essentials, everything from our major shopping strip, Brunswick Mall, through to Town Hall, Parliament House, finishing up at the Central Market where you can then further explore uh, one of Adelaide's, I guess, food meccas. We stop here at Lee Street. Uh, basically, this is one of the major hubs uh, for nightlife in Adelaide. Uh, while it's a little bit quieter now, uh, plenty of bars, uh, beautiful eateries around here. I really love Pink Moon Saloon. It's got a really cute facade in between two bigger structures. Um, you've got Power Up Bar, which is themed with uh, arcade games and stuff like that. Uh, but then also Plain Jane, Casa Blah Blah. Oh, the list goes on. The street art scene in Adelaide is actually really incredible. It's really varied. You've got lots of different styles of art that have um, appeared over the last 10 years. There is one particular artist named Jimmy C who's from Adelaide, um, although he's now based in London, but he has a lot of works present here and I actually do a tour just based on his works alone. Thanks, Katina, and we'll circle back to the Adelaide Central Market a little later. Now, there's no doubt that the South Australian capital is a fabulously historic and artistic place, and most of the preeminent cultural institutions can be found on North Terrace. Now, the State Library of South Australia is home to the famous Mortlock Building. I've heard a lot about it, but I've never actually seen it. Let's go and take a little wander back in time. My name's Mark Gilbert. I'm a librarian at the State Library of South Australia. The Mortlock Building opened in 1884. At the time it was known as the Jervois Wing of the State Library, named after Governor Jervois who had laid the foundation stone. And at that time it housed the library, the South Australian Museum 
and the Art Gallery of South Australia, all in the building. It has been described as one of the world's most beautiful library buildings, a French Renaissance style building with a ground floor and two upper galleries. And within the building itself, there's displays from the library's collections. It's named after John Andrew Tennant Mortlock, who's the library's biggest benefactor. And it was decided in 1986, which was the 150th anniversary of South Australia, to take the building back to how it looked when it first opened. And because he was our biggest benefactor, it was decided to name it after him. The clock that sits on the southern end of the building was made by Dent and Sons of the Strand in London, who also made Big Ben. I still get a thrill when I go into the Mortlock building. Sometimes I give tours to members of the public and I talk about the building, I talk about the library's collections, but I still get a sense of pleasure when I see the look on people's faces who've never seen the place before. General entry to the library is free, as it is to the neighbouring South Australian Museum and prestigious Art Gallery of South Australia. Parts of the stunning gallery complex date back to 1900. While exploring the Lightfield Exhibition Halls, we caught up with Assistant Director Lisa Slade for a chat about what visitors can expect and some of the gallery's must-sees. I hope that a first-time visitor to the Art Gallery of South Australia will have all of their expectations completely blown away. I hope that this is a place when people step into the gallery from North Terrace, any expectations that they previously harboured, any ideas about what they thought an art gallery might look like, get jettisoned out the window. Because this is a place where we have very consciously, through all of our collection displays and through our temporary exhibitions, attempted to loosen things up a little bit. We have three to four major exhibitions every single year. But on top of that, there'll be at least a dozen changing displays. And we might take a gallery like the one that we're in, for instance, and have an exhibition within an exhibition. We might decide to invite a contemporary artist into the space to respond to history, which is one of the things that's happening in this space right now. So Adam, please meet Circe Invidiosa. She fell in love with a man that she couldn't have. She was so envious of that, that she became a sorceress. And what we've got here is probably our most iconic painting. When it arrived directly from London into Adelaide in the year it was painted, the paint was still wet. Because in fact, it was still really in the artist's hands when we acquired the work. So I know that the gallery has a, an amazing indigenous art Yes. Can you talk to me about that? We do. There's a new painting that's become part of the collection. It's a three by three metre painting, so a large painting, and it's by a Bidinjara artist, an Anunga woman called Nilmadi Burton. And Nilmadi Burton paints the Seven Sisters. It's the story of this cheeky man and the sisters who try and escape from him. They jump from the sky down to the ground when they see delicious figs. Then they jump back into the sky and what we end up with is this beautifully, I like to think of it as kind of pyrotechnics, it's explosive, it's like, it feels like Krakenite. <laughs> it has this sense of looking at these incredibly vibrant, vital paintings, like Catherine wheels sp spinning out of control. Well, you know what, you better take me to see those seven sisters. <laughs> Let's go and have a look. Time for a change of pace and a leisurely cruise on the River Torrens, which runs through the Adelaide Parklands, adjacent to North Terrace. The Popeye has been delighting passengers of all ages for decades, and the 45-minute sightseeing cruise is great value. Commentary is provided on points of interest along the way. There's no spinach on offer, but you can upgrade your cruise at the time of booking to include a Devonshire tea. The cruise does a full circuit from Elder Park, but there's also a stop at Adelaide Zoo. 
So you may want to disembark there and meet Zoo A-listers Wang Wang and Funi. The panda exhibit is open daily. Pre-book your tickets to the zoo online. The cruise passes one of the city's most iconic sites, Adelaide Oval. So take this opportunity to wander over and take a closer look at this historic and much loved sporting venue. If you're game, Roof Climb Adelaide Oval has a fetching set of overalls in your size. All right, here we go on the Adelaide Oval Roof Climb. Now, I've got to warn you, I am not the best with heights. We're going to see how that goes. I've got my guide, Jake, holding the camera. Say good day, Jake. Good day. And he's going to have a chat to us up top about what visitors can expect on this iconic experience. All right, let's do it. Now, I have to say, it wasn't anywhere near as terrifying as I'd imagined. So, Jake, tell me, what's the best thing about being a guide on the uh, Adelaide Oval Roof Climb? I work the greatest job in the world. Look at this. It's an absolutely beautiful area to work in, so picturesque. Being up here, you get a full 360 degree view of Adelaide and the surrounding parklands. It's absolutely beautiful. And just run us through the process. What can guests expect when they come on the climb? On the climb, so they can expect a two hour tour, as well as providing you a little bit of history and a little bit of an explanation about the oval. You also get to combine that with a bit of an adventure being up here on the roof. Now, the lean out platform. Yes. Tell me about the lean out as platform. It's not see. something I can do, but no, you tell me. Don't want to give it a go? I, I couldn't Are you do it. sure? Did you tell me, because I've got some vision of it. Just describe what happens and where it is. So the lean out platform, which is situated just to my right over here, it sits above on the riverbank stand on the south side of the oval. You get to stretch your trolley out as far as it can go and basically let go as far as you can and lean out. Not for the faint of heart, but I highly recommend everybody give it a go. Now the Adelaide Central Market is the doyen of the city's dining scene and it's been a much loved part of the urban landscape here in the South Australian capital for decades. Now even if you're not in the market for a bunch of carrots or a stick of celery on holiday, a guided tour is still a fun and delicious way to explore. It sounds cliché, but no visit to Adelaide would be complete without dropping by the Central Market, one of the largest undercover produce markets in the Southern Hemisphere. As you would expect, fresh produce features prominently, but the market also showcases an array of artisanal food products and offers flavoursome street eats. To really get under the skin of this local institution, we're joining Food Tours Australia on their market discovery tour. Introductions out of the way, our knowledgeable guide Cheryl issues everyone with a bag for samples. But I note seasoned locals have come pre-prepared. Over the course of 1.5 hours, Cheryl leads us through the maze of 70 stalls, pointing out highlights and adding to our stash of take-home goodies. We look, touch, smell and taste our way from stall to stall. One of the highlights is Indigenous-owned Something Wild, which specialises in game meats and native greens. The market is home to several street food outlets and some pot samples come our way. And what better way to end a market tour than with a colourful sweet treat? The Barossa Valley needs little introduction as a wine region and is home to around 80 cellar doors. 
It makes a great day trip from Adelaide, but we're leaving the driving and decisions on which wineries to visit to the experts at Taste the Barossa, which operates a popular daily wine tour from the city. Tour guide JR tells us more about the valley and the cellar doors we'll visit. G'day, my name's JR. I'm a tour guide for Taste the Barossa. We do tours up to uh, the Barossa Valley, McLaren Vale and the Adelaide Hills. Well, the, the valley's around 25 kilometres long from north to south. It's Australia's uh, most well-known wine region. It's a premier red wine region, although we do a few white uh, varieties here as well. But I think it's, it's probably the best marketed uh, wine region in Australia and it has some of the oldest vineyards in Australia and also some of the oldest vineyards in the world. Um, which is pretty special. So first up we have uh, Chateau Yoldara, which is the southern end of the Barossa Valley. It's probably uh, been around since the 1940s. Um, beautiful old property, a gorgeous old building, and we do a, a little uh, flight there of about five to six wines. Then on to Peter Lehman wines. Um, we do a tasting at Peter Lehman's. Uh, some beautiful wines there, and, 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 yeah, including the sparkling Shiraz. And uh, we do a lovely platter tasting there as well afterwards, like a, a plowman's platter. We call it the Weybridge platter, which is uh, you know cheeses, uh, cured meats, breads, olives, pickles, almonds. Nice. We then travel to Lambert Estate, which is where we are right now. Lambert Estate is a small um, boutique style winery. Uh, it's owned by a lovely couple, Jim and Pam Lambert, from, originally from the States. Um, boutique in production, but quite a large uh, tasting room. Um, and uh, yeah, we do a, a flight here of about six wines as well. From here, we finish off right up into the northern sector of the Barossa. Uh, to Wolf Blast, one of the biggest um, producers in the region, and uh, we will do a, a tasting there. And they'll tend to bring out a lot of the varietals that we don't see in the bottle shops. Now, if you're short on time, it's possible to do a wine tasting without leaving the city. Now, I happen to know that you have just been to the Barossa Valley. However, if you are coming to Adelaide or South Australia and you just don't know where your palate lies and you want to extend your knowledge, please come visit us here at the National Wine Centre. We are currently covering um, 50 of the wine regions here in Australia and as a total there is roughly about 65 wine regions. There is definitely something that will um, tickle your fancy. So visitors have the opportunity of walking through the centre and um, coming up to our Wine Discovery Journey Museum free of charge, having a walk around um, or heading into our wine bar where we host uh, the largest tasting experience in Australia featuring 120 wines, all Australian. Should any guests want to come through and actually have a bit more of a hosted experience we definitely do offer those too starting at $15 per person we have a guided tour for roughly a 30 minute duration guests do have the opportunity to add on a hosted tasting for $25 so roughly that 60 minute duration you get a tour followed by a hosted tasting for $40 and covering three different wine regions and three different grape varietals so when you're here in Adelaide and you're looking to have a wonderful afternoon or morning, no judgement, please come visit us. We are located just on the outskirts of this city, just right beside the beautiful botanical gardens. We wrap up this video with a day visit to the sublime Adelaide Hills, located to the east of the city. Make your first stop the Mount Lofty Summit Lookout and Cafe which offers a sweeping view of the plains, coast and city below. Flinders Column marks the naming of Mount Lofty by English navigator Matthew Flinders in 1802. The late 1830s saw German Lutherans settle in the Adelaide Hills. Escaping persecution in Prussia, they established the village of Harndorf, today one of South Australia's tourist hotspots. But 
Despite all the attention, it retains an authentic feel and that early German influence is still very visible. There are plenty of ways to pass the time in Handorf, but for my money, toasting those early Prussian immigrants with a frothy stein is at the top of the to-do list. For more ideas for amazing things to do in Adelaide, just visit our website.